Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Oxford and thanks for stopping by on your road trip. So the University of Oxford is a large research and teaching collegiate university. I'm a researcher, um, I have my own small research group uh, based in the John Radcliffe Hospital uh, and collectively we do lots of research on infectious disease and antibiotics including translating genetics into clinical microbiology. I think it's not always appreciated that when you buy a genetic sequencing machine, um, what it produces uh, is actually lots of short stretches of genetic material, which we call reads, um, and then stitch them together a bit like a huge 1D jigsaw. So you can actually work out what the genome of the species is that you're interested in. So the Global Pathogen Analysis System or, or GPAS um, is a tool that lets you process genetic reads. Or rather the aim of GPAS is to sort of simplify and commoditize that process. So you upload your reads that you've got out your genetic sequencing machine to the cloud, um, and then you get back your consensus genome and any relevant clinical and public health information that you might be interested in. Um, so the first step is the user in a sequencing lab would add the samples they've just got off a sequencing machine. Um, and then once it's there, the pipeline's kicked off. So it checks the quality of the reads, it maps them to the COVID reference genome. That then lets you detect if the, what mutations are present. And then the user can view all these final results in a web browser about sort of 20 minutes, half an hour after the upload's finished. The earlier you can identify samples that you know might be growing into an emerging variant, um, the easier it is just to go and talk to that person, do contact tracing. If you chase them all down, that would give you a pretty good chance of um, stamping out potential emerging variants before they became a problem. Yeah, so we've got a couple of other um, public health bodies uh, using the platform now around the world. And um, what we hope is that by having more and more public health bodies and institutions use GPAS, um, they will actually go on and collaborate with one another to do research, perhaps on the samples that, that they've uploaded. And we hope that we'd be able to give them um, some information that would then enable their research, some more detailed genetic information from their samples. So back in May, Oracle very generously agreed to donate to the university um, free access to OCI for 10 years for pathogen analysis. And then since then, um, we've really been working side by side on a daily basis with lots of people from Oracle, so project managers, developers, and a whole range of different experts to first integrate our uh, cloud agnostic code called SB3 into Oracle's cloud, but then deploy on that a genetic pipeline uh, specifically for SARS-CoV-2. We've all uh, together sort of risen to the challenge and, and, and got stuck in and, and worked closely both you know, with lots of people in Oxford, but also with people in Oracle um, and other institutions as well. Thanks for stopping by and listening to what I had to say about GPAS.